Hey, this is Giovanni with Unmatched Style, and I'm here with Denise Jacobs, and we're going to talk about her book, The CSS Detective's Guide, um, and her convoluted, complex evolution from many, many things into a teacher, writer, speaker, designer. Okay? So, yeah, tell us a little bit about your book. Okay, so my book is called The CSS Detective's Guide, like you said. Um, it's basically about troubleshooting. Uh, a lot of people get into writing code and start with it and then they run into a wall and kind of can't move forward and get stuck. And so uh, the editor that I talked to at Peach Pitch was like, I want to do this, this troubleshooting guide. And I was like, troubleshooting is what I'm all about. So, uh, so basically I created this uh, ways of um, getting around really common CSS bugs, um, ways of laying things out, and ways of kind of just thinking about um, either coding proactively, organizing your code, or actually solving problems when you get to them. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you came to the methodology that you employ in this book? Well, it's actually really interesting. It kind of developed when I started teaching web design and web development at Seattle Central Community College. Um, I taught there from 2000 to 2005. And uh, it was really interesting. I would be teaching people HTML and then started off with HTML and then ended up moving into CSS eventually, because you know, in 2000, you didn't really need to teach CSS. Right, right. You, could, like, you could roll out with your table-based layouts and people would be like, oh my god, that's so cool. And you'd be like, yo, what's up? Um, so I had my students would be coding and stuff like that, and then they would just, like literally, like the way I always describe it is like those little dolls, you know, with the elastic in it, and they you know, and they go, and they just like fall, and they would just completely be ineffectual. And so I kind of developed this approach, and I actually developed like this like little cute, you know, couple page guide to troubleshooting HTML. Like, if this doesn't show up, it's probably these three things. If this happens, it's probably these three things. If this, you know, if you have a problem, look where it is, like on screen, the way it's rendered, and then go into the code and like move in concentric circles, like a spiral outward, so that you can potentially find it. But like, don't go looking everywhere in the code. It's not going to be everywhere in the code. It's going to be like in one place or maybe two places. And so to kind of get people into this thinking, instead of thinking it could be everything, to say it can really only be one of three things. And then that way it's easier and then you're not as freaked out about it and you're not as anxious about it and then you can get to the problem and you can just move on to the next thing that you need to solve. So, you're, so your method kind of revolves around the fact that different elements of HTML and CSS are relative to other things that are happening at the same time? Yes, and CSS especially, but not only that, but, but there's really a kind of a limited range of what the problems could be. You know, it's, and that's why I'm saying it's not everything, it's a few things. And so when you have that limitation, just like in this conference, a lot of people are talking about how creativity stems from having limitations. Right. And so it's kind of like, your troubleshooting skills or your ability, your capacity to solve problems kind of really is greatly increased when you know that the problem is only within a certain, within a certain range. Right. If it could be any problem, you can't solve every single problem, but you can solve the fact that for some reason or another your page isn't showing up. Right. You know, it's like, oh, well, it's probably somewhere in the head, it's probably somewhere, you know, it probably is a missing bracket and the title tag or something like that easy, you know, and then once a page shows up, then you can look at something else, you know. Right. So something like that is really easy to find and really easy to think through, whereas if you think, oh my god, should I look at the end of the code? No, you should look at the end of the code. Look at the beginning of the code because that's the very first thing that's going to be dealt with. So. Okay. Well, yeah, that's great. <laughs> so everyone, C uh, CSS Detectives Guide, uh, Denise Jacobs, and uh, thanks a lot. We'll see you guys later. Thanks. <laughs>